Hello. In this video, what we're going to do is find the volume of a tetrahedron that is a, which is in this case, a solid bounded by the coordinate planes and the plane 2x plus y plus z equals four. Now I have this uh, definition of a tetrahed tetrahedron written down there, copied straight from Wikipedia. And it says a, a tetrahedron is also known as a trior pyramid, and it's a polyhedron composed of four trior faces. And so, um, and there's more, you can just read right there what it says. Okay, so what we mean by the, enclosed by the coordinate planes, is we mean that, oops, I did this wrong, okay. What we mean is that we have one plane, x, y, which is going to be the, or sorry, x, z, which is going to be one of the faces of our tetrahedron. And then we have another plane, which is y, z, and that'll form a face. And then we have x, z, and that's going to form a face. So, it's like we're in a, you know, we have this room here. Okay, so here we have this room. And, um, but the, our ceiling is given by this. I, I can turn this around and write Z of our room, our ceiling of the room is Z equals four minus Y minus Z. Or you can write FXY equals four minus Y minus Z. And so what we're going to get is um, this plane is you know something like this. Here we have here we have a, a here we have this plane that's that's the last remaining side of our tetrahedron. So we have the x z plane, the y z plane, the x y plane, and then finally we have this plane given by. 2x plus y plus c equals 4. Now, one of the ways to uh, sort of get a, a nice drawing for that plane uh, this is written down wrong. It's minus 2x. So an, a way to get a nice sketch of this plane is to find intercepts. x and y and z intercepts. So if I let y and z both equal zero, they disappear and I have two x equals four. So if y and z are zero, then two x equals four and x equals two. If I let x and z equal zero, I get y equals four. And if I let x and y equal zero, I get z equals four. It's not really necessary. Well, maybe, but I, I could probably avoid doing this and drawing such a detailed picture. If I were rushing through this, I could get away without drawing all that. So this part here that I'm doing in pink is our ceiling, our roof of this little salt that we have here. This is a, a special type of tetrahedron because two of the faces are meeting at right angles with, with, the, with a third face. So that, so that uh, we can integrate this in a certain way where we have one function, this guy right here, f of x equals four minus y minus two x, as like the roof of a function. And then the floor of our, or the roof of our solid, and then the, flo the floor of our solid is given by the function z equals zero. Okay, um, this, this floor there is D. That's what we usually call it, at least in the book we're using here. So this is D for domain, I suppose, but that's and see, we already have the intercepts, and so we can carry those over. 
So we have 0, 4, 2, 0, and then we have 0, 0. So this is the same thing as what I have over there uh, above in the solid. And some people, actually maybe quite a few, would say, I, I don't really need to draw another picture. But anyway, I'm doing it. I decided to draw this D over here just to, you know, get a, a view that might be easier for me to see. But you don't really need that. Now, this is what they call a type 1 region. Okay, type 1 region means that I have a region that's, that's bounded above by y is a function of x and by, bounded below by y is a function of x. So below is already sort of easy enough. That's y equals 0. But what is that? So I have bounded below and above. What is the function above that I've indicated by this red line? Well, OK, let's, let's look at what this, this line is. OK, I'll draw it also on, on this. I'll draw it in red. Those are, these two are the same. Well, this line is the intersection of the plane 2x plus y plus z equals 4 and the plane z equals 0. So what I can do is I can put 0 in for z. And that will give me the equation of that, of that line. So we have 2x plus 2, 2x plus y plus z equals 4. And we have z equals 0. So that gives 2x plus y plus 0 equals 4. So 2x plus y equals 4. You can write that as y equals 4 minus 2x. Or negative 2x plus 4. It's, maybe I'll write that as negative 2x plus 4. Put that in y equals mx plus b form. So that's how you can find that line. But you can also find it because you have these two points given. Now, it turns out that there's a formula for the volume of a tetrahedron, apparently. Uh, it's, not, it's not in the multivariable calculus section here. But I was just you know, reading this definition of tetrahedron. I thought, oh, I'll look that up on Wikipedia. And I started thinking, well, isn't there a formula? And the formula, apparently, for a tetrahedron in general is the area of the base times the height uh, times one third, so you can. Uh, well, I'm assuming that that that's true from Wikipedia, or that I read it right. But if you look at this, this is an easy base area to find. So we can just avoid calculus. The base is going to be um, since it's a triangle, it's one half. The, the, the I have length times width, or this is going to be two times four. And then the height of this whole thing, sorry, I, I wrote it down right. I was thinking a triangle or something. The tetrahedron is one third. It's one third base times height. All right. So I have one third, and I have the base is four, and the height, as you can see, is four here. So you could just do this whole thing without even doing, not, without doing nearly as much. The two times the four is eight, divided by two, and you get four because that's a triangle. And then we're going to multiply by 4, and we get 16 thirds. So don't use calculus, but I guess this formula came about from calculus. So um, anyway, this <laughs> we're, not, we're going to use the calculus method. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to um, express this region in set notation type 1. It's in set notation, all you do is you put these squiggle brackets. And you're right, it's all x, y, and the vertical line means such that. Some people prefer a, instead of vertical line, you could put a semicolon. But with uh, such that, and what we see is that x is between 0 and 2. And y has this, okay, so, so x is between 0 and 2. We read off those. And then y has 0 as a function below and above, it has this negative 2x plus 4. 
I'm going to write this as 4 minus 2x because I've already done the, I've done the problem, and I know if I write it that way, it's a little easier to see something later. But anyway, it's negative 2x plus 4. And so then our integral, well, our volume is the integral over the region D of the top function, F. Okay, a, a more general formula, really, though, is it's the top f, or, you know, the function above, minus, say, g, just made up that whatever letter might work best for your function, but that's the one that comes below. In this case, below is z equals 0. So, so if your function, if your surface, if this function is positive the whole, over the whole interval, that, you know, that, that, the integral of that function over the um, xc plane would just be given by that function. So anyway, if this function is 0, we don't need that, which is the case here. So x goes from 0 to 2. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to 2 dx. Then I'm going to integrate from 0 to 4 minus 2x. And I'm just simply lifting up these bounds here. And then I'm integrating my function, which is 4 minus 2x minus y. And we're integrating that dy. So y is between these two functions. I put that, that there, and then I have dy. And I'm good to go, and I just start integrating away. So, um, okay. I first integrate with respect to y, and 4 minus 2x is a constant with respect to y. So when I integrate, I take the constant and multiply by y. That's the integral with respect to y. And I subtract, okay, so this is a constant, a constant, I integrate, and I just get y times the constant. Now I have minus y squared over 2, or I'll put 1 half y squared, and I'm going from 0 to 4 minus 2x dx, and now I plug in for y those bounds of integration. You know what you could do if, if it, it sort of makes it a little messy, but you could write y equals 0 y equals 4 minus 2x, just to remind yourself that these, guys, these go into y. So I still have 0 to 2, big brackets, 4 minus 2x, and I plug in for y, 4 minus 2x. And then I subtract, so I put y equals 4 minus 2x, and then I subtract 0. Then I come to 1 half, and I put 4 minus 2x to y squared, so I get 4 minus 2x squared minus 0 squared. So this is, the way I'm doing this, uh, I suppose I should make a little explanation. The way I often plug in is I, I plug in this way. I, I have 0 to 2. I'm plugging in, right? I have 4 minus 2x. I plug in the y from 0 to 4 minus 2x, and I subtract 1 half. I plug in y squared from 0 to 4 minus 2x. This is a, you know completely allowed, and it's a good way to do it, I think, to organize things. I, I do this often, not always. Another way is you, you put in for y 4 minus 2x. You just, for this whole thing, you put in 4 minus 2x. Then you subtract, put in zero. But you can, it's really using the distributed property. You can do that for each of these separately. And that's what I did here. It would lead to the same thing and might seem confusing, but um, I think it's a good thing to do sometimes. Okay, what we end up is four minus two x, like one of those, subtracting half of the four minus two x so 1 minus a half makes a half, so we get 0 to 2, 1 half, 4 minus 2x squared dx. I think I could just evaluate this in my head, sort of figure it out, but I'm going to go the whole way and, and do u sub, where u is 4 minus 2x, du is negative 2 dx, so negative 1 half du is equal to dx. So when I change things, I have 1 half, 4 minus, I just carried over the 1 half, 
4 minus 2x becomes u squared. And then dx, as we see here, is negative 1 half to u. At this point, I am going to change the balance of integration. So what I see is when x equals 0, u equals 4 minus 2 times 0, which is 4. And when x equals 4, u equals 4 minus 2 times 4. Sorry. When x equals 2. When x equals 2, so, right? So we have x equals 0 and x equals 2. So when x equals 2, we have 4 minus 2 times 2, which equals 0. So this is integral negative 1 fourth, 4 to 0, u squared du. And what I do is I flip these bounds of integration because I, I like the, the greater number on the top. Doesn't, you don't have to do that, but I'm going to do that. If I flip those, I change this negative to a positive. And then I just integrate, and I get um, 1 fourth times u to the third power over 3 from 0 to 4. If I put in 0, you know, this is going to be just 0. So I have 1 twelfth. Well, I'll just write it down. 4 to the third minus 0 to the third. 4 to the third is 64, and I divide by 12. But if I divide 64 by 4, I get 16 over 3. I mean, I could have simplified the 4 and the 12 and get 4 squared divided by 3. But anyway, so that's the, that's the answer. I think what would be really interesting uh, is to do a general proof using this integration that, in fact, the volume of a tetrahedron is, tetrahedron is one-third area of the base times the height. Um, I don't know. Maybe you could just prove that cutting up. Um, a, just cutting up a solid and making a tetrahedron somehow without using any, any calculus. But, but um, perhaps you can find a way, a general way to, to prove that formula by using calculus. So I think this had a lot of things on there which were good. As you see, I make little tiny mistakes in here or there which are not so good. And I, I suspect some people who are smarter than me don't do that. Or maybe me 20 years ago when I was... I don't know, maybe it was different then. Maybe I wouldn't have made so many little tiny things. But there's a lot going on here. It takes a fair amount of concentration. So if you're going to do math, I don't know, you got to focus, I guess. And so it's, it's, it's really good for the brain. Pretty fun. So anyway, we found the, the volume of that solid. Okay, so um, that's it for the video. Okay, thank you. Like, comment, subscribe. There you go. Thank you.